beautiful people of the interwebs, the Googles and the YouTubes and the spiderwebs and all that stuff. Welcome to Nez Says, a place where musicians can get together and inspire each other to play more guitar and more pedals and more amps and more basses and more clarinets and more everything. <laughs> more singing. Don't forget the singing. Flugel horns. Hello, Ty. How are you? Hey, everybody. And I didn't bring my clarinet. Maybe I should have brought my alto sax and I could pretend to be Eddie Money because Eddie Money was pretty cool. Uh, I'm good, Dave. Good to see you. Yeah, same here. Hello, hey, ben. ben. Hello from the Great White North, which is the Great Wet North. you got more of it coming on the way, Dave. You know, every day it just keeps moving on through. And uh, yeah, it comes from here and goes up there. Oh, man, busy week around here, a lot of gas happening in the old tone bunker, and we'll talk a bit about that, and uh, yes, some topics tonight that we get to discuss, but first, I got to get to these crazy cats in the chat, because uh, I'm looking at Guitar Man 45, Tim Thomas, hey, Guitar Man. Gear Junkie 35, he's 10 less, apparently, hey, Dan of New Jersey, Papa Dan. Blue, Bo Zeke, Bo -Z. Mark Z. Bex. Let's Mark see who else Fett. we got. Joe Hervey 84, or as I call him, Kid Shred. Thomas hey, Santiago. Randy. Hey, Kirk. Thomas. Let's see. And that, yeah, and then StreamYard, apparently. Oh, Kurt 5150 snuck right in there. Charles 75N. Right on. Hey, Randy and Kurt. Hey, Charles. How's everyone doing tonight? Yeah. Hope everyone's doing well out there in the Toniverse. Toniverse? Yep. So that's a word I, I mean, I, I know we're going to talk about some pedals, and we're going to try to get specific with some some pedal talk tonight. And um, but you know, a few weeks ago, we talked about you know some pedal boards, and and I showed like a carry on board that that I was using at the moment, and then Dave showed some things about his board. Tell me about. I, I just want to ask a question, and maybe this should be a private question and not not public, but maybe everybody wants to know. Favorite reverb pedal, and how do you like to use reverb in a rock setting? Well, if you uh, you want to go first, Ben, you want me to hit it? Oh, I, I I'm pretty straightforward. Um, I don't use a reverb pedal. And the reason for that is all my amps have reverb. Okay. So uh, generally, you know, but Fender reverbs are pretty consistent. We know they go one to 10, one to 11, give or take. I like to run it at about 1.7. So <laughs> the you Fender amp about. owners, about. You know, it's Estimate. there. It's not excessive because anything past two can be excessive. Um, anything more than that, then you better start playing some ambient stuff. Or mm -hmm. be talented like Larry Mitchell and not play over top of yourself. But I found, yeah, about 1.7 on the old Fender scale. And, yeah, I, I like, because I, I generally run a little slapback delay, one or two repeats, and some reverb just to let it wash out. Yeah, Kurt's using um, reverb for a VH1 kind of tone. Charles, spring reverb on his amp. I don't mm -hmm. have a, I don't have reverb on any of the amps that, um, that I'm using right now. And uh, I asked the question for very selfish reasons because um, I'm, I'm kind of at a crossroads as to what I want to use for reverb. Dave, what are you using? I don't use a reverb uh, pedal. I, I'm kind of the way Ben feels about it. You know, I like everyone has seen my rig. It's a, it's a stereo rig, two amps. One amp has uh, reverb on it. The other is bone dry, doesn't have reverb. And then I have a delay that ping pongs. It does like a a a quarter. It's a like a a quarter note, eighth note thing. So it's bop 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 bop. You know that that type of thing. So if you use too much reverb, that washes out. Uh, and I like more of a dry signal, since I'm more of a delay guy. Uh, but when I do use the reverb, I like there to I like it to be a nice spring reverb from the amp, and I don't use too much of it. Just a hint. Hey, hey Amanda. Dan is uh, Dan puts out there the big sky. I mean that is just such a phenomenal piece of gear. 
um, so good, it's probably too good for me. Honestly, there's probably too much horsepower in that in that pedal for me. Uh, but you know, they make a same color. I don't know what it's. I don't know what Strumming calls it. Maybe a reverberator. Maybe it's a smaller footprint. Uh, yes, I've seen that. Hi, Amanda. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to say hello. Yeah, oh, it, uh, it, this is pretty cool. Guitar Man 45 using a TCG Force uh, and a Lexicon 81. Doggone, you're using a Lexicon, man? What? You don't need anything. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Everybody's trying to copy the Lexicon algorithm in, in a pedal. Well, speaking so. of Lexicon, oh, I just funny. have a Lexicon MX300 sitting right there. So It's so funny that people are still using Lex Lexicon. Those are the biggest things in, in the late 80s. And, and they, they are, sound, I mean, they sound amazing. It's yeah. still going strong. People still want that lexicon sound. Like a PCM so hear, 70. Yeah, you know, so um, I've gone through a couple of reverb pedals that um, are supposedly modeled after that algorithm. One was the TC Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. which I thought sounded really good. Very and then powerful. the other was a, was a Digitech Polara, mm -hmm. which I don't know that they're making anymore. No. And as I recall, those things shot up in value after... Dave Friedman came out saying best bang for the buck reverb pedal is that one. And all of a sudden they went, huh? like Josh Scott might as well have praised them because all of a sudden overnight they went up. It's well, funny. See, all right, so, so Dan, who's got a lexicon just said on his practice board, he's got a hall of fame. So there you go. It's funny that you mentioned the hall of fame because uh, those pedals, they break very, very quickly. And they're also, a little distorted. If you plug one of those in alone, don't plug any other effects in and listen to it. They distort. You'll really? listen to it without. You listen to your amp without it, and then turn it on. Your amp will, will distort a little bit. It's gonna let, oh. have a little fizz to it. There's something up with that pedal that just it's not it's not right. Oh, so guitar uh, gear junkie said um, that the Lexicon powers the uh, Verbzilla too. I didn't know that. Nice. Yeah. But the guy that has the, the real deal is using a, a Hall of Fame pedal. So that speaks volumes for the quality of the sound of that. That, that. that Hall of Fame, I've seen that on so many boards, especially because you can get do it with the tone print and such, where it's definitely on a board if anyone has more than one reverb pedal. It's always the second one. You're guaranteed because it's like, well, I need you know, uh, whatever reverb for this song on the set. So they have that and it's set to that because the tone print, they do a great representation of your spring reverbs, your plate reverbs and uh, stuff like that. So you, you can get some really uh, cool stuff. And like that and, uh, was it their flashback, the delay, the TC Electronics, those two TC Electronics pedals you see on a lot of boards. And hello to Frank Corcoran. And yes, hey, Frank. Was, I do remember you saying that. He was at a pizza joint in Philly and he had they had a Calgary... Alberta station on and they're calling for snow showers a couple weeks ago. Yep. It's north. Snow showers. Jesus. Wow. Well, when you think you're, you know, you're another five, six hundred miles north of Minnesota and Dakotas and stuff, you know. Yeah, another thumbs up from uh, 5150 fly guy for the uh um Hall of Fame. Hey, listen, you know, you it's fine. That's that's what makes baseball, you know. Uh, I thought I liked it too, and then I've heard other pedals that I thought were a little bit cleaner, and uh, my Hall of Fame broke right away. And I don't, I don't have a heavy step when I, I can't even step on pedals because I'll break my foot. <laughs> uh, I don't know uh, that I, I'm resisting buying. Uh, if you're looking for a good plate reverb uh, style pedal, uh, my good buddy Lawrence at LPD Pedals recently released uh -huh. the Cascades Reverb. Um, oh, cool. RJ Ronquillo did a really good demo on, and it's a really nice plate reverb in pedal form. Well, that hey, guy G makes everything sound great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I love reverb, like um, like on a clean channel, arpeggiated, you know, uh, with single coils arpeggiated with, with some chorus on there. Favorite chorus pedal, Dave? Uh, well, it's... I guess it's not really a chorus pedal, but my Dimension C was a graft. Love it. Mm -hmm. It's a, what about uh, you, a boss, my boss Dimension um, C. I'll go with my boss CE2. 
Uh-huh. All good. What about no love for the CH1? I haven't had one yet. The CH1, yeah, I mean, they, they've been around forever. Not yeah. my favorite pedal. Good sounding. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, the other, my other favorite, which probably is my all time favorite, but it's just, you can't use it because it's so big is the boss CE one. Yep. Uh -huh. Really big pedal. It's the most lush, amazing chorus ever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, speaking of choruses, I, I just picked this up yesterday. Uh, this is an Akai professional uh, custom auto shop chorus from their custom analog custom shop line. This thing's pretty cool. I dig it. Uh, you got a tone, a spread, and a speed, and then a rate switch between fast and slow. And uh, I'm digging it. It's pretty cool. And uh, yes. Frank and Quentin were mentioning, yes, uh, a buddy of mine, when I was picking this up and a few other things, the local Long McQuaid yesterday, my buddy Travis was working, and he said, Hey, do you want to borrow my rig? It's just sitting in the trunk of my car if you want to borrow it for a week or so. So I said, sure. So I have this in the studio for a week. That's cool. Yeah, yeah uh, Bozik says that he doesn't know who to listen to with demos. RJ or Brett or Tom Quayle or Pete Thorne, toss up for him. Yeah, those are, I mean, those are, those are all great demo oh, guys. I and I love, I love the way they, they do that. You know, I, I've tried out this this chorus recently by this boutique builder who, full disclosure, I, I know and um, have an awful lot of personal and, and professional respect for. It's a guy named Philippe Herndon, and he owns a company called Caroline Guitar Company. He makes a terrific chorus pedal called the Somersault that is it, it one of the best I've ever heard. Um and you know, I use a boss. I use a boss chorus sometimes. Uh, somebody mentioned an MXR. I think Kurt did an MX, an MXR analog chorus. Great pedal. I got um, an MXR stereo chorus on my board as well. Love yeah, it. I love all of those. But it, it, if you're really, if you're really into trying maybe something a little different, um, check out some gear videos of the Somersault by uh, by Caroline Guitar Company, guys. It is. It's not a crazy expensive pedal. It is built by hand right here in the United States, and it is it's pretty special. You want to talk different kinds of chorus tones? Because I got another yeah. pedal in this week, Ty. Yeah. Uh, that you can do some chorus tones with. And uh, unlike any other chorus tones in the world, I got my very rainbow nice. music this week. Oh, very nice, Ben. And... Cool little, you can get a bit of a little tape slapback delay in some of the settings, some nice chorus settings, some, and then just some, yeah, that happened when you press the button settings. It's pretty mm. wild. I'm, That's I'm, cool, man. It puts a cool. smile on your face. Man, have you guys, there's a movie out called That Pedal Movie. Have you guys seen that movie? I have not. That, you told me about it yesterday. I wanted to see it last night. I totally forgot. Great movie. How many people in the chat have seen that movie? I've heard that, good things and bad. That pedal movie is it's fantastic. I heard they they cover some stuff extensively and gloss over some other key builders of the past, I'm told. That's all I'm saying because I haven't seen it yet. Yet. I do need to see it, though. Yeah. Happy says Voodoo Lab made a good chorus. I sold mine because I didn't really use it, but it received compliments when I did. Check... I love all the Voodoo Lab stuff. I'd be curious to check that out. Oh, I love the Voodoo Lab stuff. I mean, yeah. I got, I really got into uh, that pedal they made. Uh, uh, it was um, Sparkle Drive. I love Sparkle, Sparkle Drive mod. I love the Sparkle Drive. That's really a great pedal. Good yeah. lord, is that a good pedal? And I really got into when James Santiago was demoing the Sparkle Drive mod with the Giggity. You know, which is uh which is a preamp mm -hmm. um that you put in front of your I almost you know, bought a giggity you, yesterday. Holy smoke it's, it's, it's great, man. It's a it's yeah. a great pedal. And great guys too. I always enjoy stopping by the Voodoo Labs booth at shows. They're really nice guys. Have I tried the Donner Force 2 preamps, although no SLO one hundred 
type clone. No, I'd be curious to try that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how face says their trim is good too. Jay Steen says that um, he knew a lot about it from the JHS Pedals YouTube channel. Um, I hear that that's great. I've not seen all of their content, but you know, I, I know guys that watch that religiously. Well, I think Josh owns. Like it, it's almost at the point where I'd say you know, barring new low end clones that come out like on Amazon all the time, but like barring those that are coming out daily, it seems. He's got to own like one, like 70% of all pedals made, it seems, because when he finds out about a company, he he buys all the pedals from that company. Really? Oh, yeah. Insane collection. I forget how many thousand pedals he is at at this point. And usually, that's a a, a real thing, you know, collecting pedals. I mean, you know firsthand. Mm -hmm. Collecting pedals is like your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I love it. People people collect pedals like they like they collect baseball cards. It's, it's incredible. I was just about to say that, Dave. That it's for for me. It's my modern day uh, collecting baseball cards. You know, because we'll trade them like baseball cards too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, anyone uh, anyone have an extra tumnus that they want to uh, trade for something or sell? Let me know. And speaking of Tumnus pedals, shall we talk about what our feature uh, our feature tonight? Dun dun dun! Dave, I'm just going to go on the record you. and say that I love the Wampler Tumnus. Tumnus, I just think it's one of the most amazing overdrive pedals ever made, and it is so accessible to any player that that wants to get a hold of it i mean it, it it's a very inexpensive as the way pedals go i mean it's a very inexpensive pedal and um and can be available to any player i love that it's very true very so, true yeah. the the big question is why are clones so expensive yeah i you know uh as an outsider looking at when i discovered the clone and i'll say this because one of these is not like the other. Some people on this panel may have owned or currently own clones. I'm not saying who, and someone hasn't. I'm not saying who. So <laughs> from what I saw was it was almost like the classic supply and demand because people were like, ooh, what's that? And you got 20 people that constantly want a supply of 15 of them. So there was always a little bit of a back order, like King of Tone, modern times. So it was almost like Dumble Lamps. Like that was part of the legend of Dumble was – you know, it was like, first you had to be Dumble worthy because you went to Dumble and you say, hey, can you build an amp for me? He goes, I don't know. Are you cool? And if you thought you were cool, they put you on a waiting list. Well, you have and, a, uh, a quick, quick, yeah, quick sidebar, though. You have a, a Dumble type pedal on your board, right? Don't you have like a Vertex on your board? Me, yeah. Not. I yeah. do. Yeah, I've got the, uh, what's it called? The Ultraphonics. And it sounds, it's probably my favorite overdrive on my board. Okay. Only because you don't have a tumnus on there. Well, it's different. <laughs> you know, the thing is, when I get the tumnus, I don't know what the hell I'm going to take off the board because I don't have any more room. But I every, every overdrive pedal I have on there does something that I need it to do. So I'm thinking the next step is to get a bigger board. I would think we're daisy chaining boards. You know, sort of like, you know, how drummers have their double kick pedals. You can have one pedal board for each foot. I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I, you know. Man, I want to see, I want to see Jay Steen's pedal board because uh, he's got, he's got all kind of cool stuff. I've seen Um, Jay Steen's pedal board uh, about a year and a half ago and it was cool then. And the guy's still buying quality gear. So I can only imagine. Oh, that's cool. Um, I just want to say for the record that when when I obtained my clone, it was way before the craziness happened with all of that. I mean, and and is it's not on my pedal board. I mean, I'm not I'm not currently. The, but the way I like to use a clone is it doesn't really kind of fit what I'm doing playing wise right now. Right. So I'm not I'm not you I'm not using it. So. I don't want anyone to think that I ran out and spent like a, a bunch of money on that on that pedal. I got mine way before 
but, all that but even before Kai, they they did carry a bit of a premium. You know what I mean? Like compared, yeah, to, but nothing compared to what it is now. No, no, oh, no, no. Now it's just crazy. You know. I remember about three years ago, maybe four. Uh, I sold my last clon for eighteen hundred dollars, and it was a silver one. It didn't have a horsey on it. Sold for eighteen hundred dollars to the music zoo. Hmm. So figure if they gave me eighteen hundred dollars for that, what did they sell it for? Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Hey, David Share, other left. But if you're looking for, uh, you know, I, I, I think you're right, man. It's supply demand, and then look, there's a lot of brand behind that too, right? There's a lot of mystique. There's a lot of, I mean, there's the internet is full of comparison videos between clones and the real thing. And, and the listener can make up their own mind as to, you know, what they like, what they don't like or, or whatever. Um, and you can have an opinion about, is that, is that clone close enough? And at the end of the day, it isn't, no clone is going to be the art that Bill Finnegan created. That's right. You know, uh, and, and those, those puddles really are a work of sonic art and craftsmanship. And, you know, you open up the pedal and you know, it's gooped. Oh, you yeah. know, kind of, you know, Dave mentioned yeah. Dumble a minute ago. It's kind of, it's, it, you know, they're, they're gooped like a Dumble. Right. So. Well, that's why I always saw that comparison in many ways, the parallels, because, you know, Bill Fillion, he only built so many for so such a period of time, although he is building them again. But it's not like he's sitting there eight hours a day pumping them out, Ty. He builds them when he feels the need to build one. Well, I think that look, I, I, the, the way that the way that I like to hear a clone, I, 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 the way that I like to hear a clone, uh, I think it's the best sounding overdrive. And I like it. Like if I were to have that Fender amp right behind you, Ben, with one of your tellies and a clone in between that, mm, it's pretty special. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm that's pretty on, magical. I'm looking on reverb right now and the red KTR pedal, which is also a clone. Right. Yes. I Six, built it in. Six it's or seven hundred. The least expensive one is six twenty-five on here. Yeah, that's the least expensive one. The most expensive gold clon with a horse is, with a horse is ten thousand dollars. Mm. Ten thousand dollars. There you go. You know. Wow. Small price to pay for a little bit. That doesn't mean he's going to get 10000 for it. No. And see, and that's the thing. And this is where we've got, you know, a lot of circuits. There's a lot of clones of different circuits out there, you know, whether it be tube screamers, fud, fuzz faces, big muff circuits, all these things. But generally, well, actually, you know, uh, on a few, you know, we have where you'll have your very affordable clones which are, eh, you know, they're fairly close. But then we get into all the way up through boutique builders that are building, you know, my take on. You know, it's a lot of my takes on, not necessarily a duplicate of the circuit, but a close representation with a handful of changes to the builder's yeah. desire. Yeah. You know. Hey, Guitar Man 45, I'm right there with you, buddy. That, that's exactly the way I think about it in today's in today's world as well. Hey, Bozik, I actually saw that. I saw that shootout some time ago. And I believe that I, I thought that they sounded very similar. I got to be honest. Yep. Well, you know, you got to be honest and say, you know, all the, all the clones sound very similar. <clears throat> they yep. sound similar to an extent. Yep. Well, like like the Archer, I think I'm a big fan of the Archer pedal, but I think it's slightly darker than like the Tumnus, right. and that could be cool for some guys that are running an amp that require that, you know, that require that, right? I mean, because look, at the end of the day, I'm going to play an amp. Ben's going to play the same amp. We're going to sound completely different. Yeah, well, and, you, you know what you're doing, Ty. That's why. <laughs> you know what, the J Rad pedals. As a as a company, yeah, all of his pedals are a little bit darker than than what any other pedal in its class in their class. How, how, the, you, the dude pedal is supposed to be a dumble. It's a little darker 
than say my my ultraphonics or other other style dumbbell pedals. All of I've I've owned almost every one of his overdrive pedals. They're a tiny bit dark. They just are. I think that's the way he has them. Uh, that's the way he makes them. Yeah. So my, well, we've had my friend Jay on. He's a he's a Nessus alumni. He's a he's a pedal freak and um, he owns everything. And when he had the dude on his board, Dave, I mean, it was, I, I could tell immediately uh, when he stepped on that because it was, it was just, I mean, it was, it was just a gut punch, man. I just it loved, really I lush. loved the sound big. of it. Yeah. Yeah. The dude pedal is really, it's a, it's a great, great pedal. It yeah. really is. There's mm. nothing wrong with that pedal. Hey, we've got, yet I don't own one yet. I don't own one. Do you own one? I did. I owned one for a long time, and I loved it. But do you own my one, buddy, Dan? My, my buddy Dennis, Dennis Delgado, who is also an alumni, wanted to borrow it one day, so I lent it to him, and I still haven't gotten it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that happens. Uh, I, Ty, I'm trying to stay away from the dumbbells and boxes because that's another rabbit hole, and uh -huh. we need another rabbit hole yet. Uh -huh yet and i want to show that we've got one of our uh show supporters here tessie switch use coupon code nez says and save 15 percent on your next tessie switch order good yeah, to see robin awesome. here and we also have who else did i see sneak in here daniel horsley and music therapy laz who's out for dinner with a sweetie very nice cool good to Bozik see you says, switch bozik says if someone prefer prefer uh Prefers an archer or a wampler pedal over a five clan, five k clan. Fine, those guys make very good pedals. But if people are preferring an eighty dollar fake over the real clan, that's embarrassing. Well, I don't know about that. If you can save forty nine ninety five and get a similar sound out of a, an expensive pedal, as long as the pedal is made well, yeah, you know, you want to step on and it's going to break, then why not? Yeah, you know, why not? Food. The Soul Food is a great sounding clon pedal. Yeah, and, and it's what, durable. Like bucks and it's durable. And, and, it's, and it's durable. Bucks, and yep. it sounds good. The oh, my my only complaint, if there is any, is is just a little too much. It's a little noisy. Yeah. But doing sixty, no one's gonna hear that noise. You know, it's a it's a great pedal. Sixty bucks, mm -hmm. seventy bucks. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's a good sound. It's is it the best sounding clon? No, but it's a really good and it's cheap. So and it's not embarrassing. I've owned one for quite a while as well. I owned a lot of pedals that, you know, again I buy and trade. I, I you know, I, I, I accumulate a big amount oh. of pedals, and then I buy the one or two that are so expensive that I really want. You know, Tessie Switch has a comparison video on his uh, on his channel. That we will all have to oh. check out after this, yeah. where he's he's demoing various clon you know, clon models. Nice. Shout out! We got Jasco Plumbing Supply in the house. Hey, Jasco. Good to see Hi, you. Hi, Jasco. How are you doing? Uh, speaking of uh, clon clones, I, I'm just gonna just you know take over for about 30 seconds, only because coming out one week from today, and you do need to be on the LPD newsletter mailing list which is LPD www.lpdpedals.com slash sign dash up. Coming out next week is the LPD Embers Overdrive, which is Lawrence's take on the Klon with an active base control, which at noon, there, noon, out of the circuit, your basic Klon circuit. You can add up to or take away up to 16 decibels of low end, which really opens up the pedal to possibilities tone-wise. <coughs> Excuse me. If you'd like to hear it, I'm dropping a demo on my channel, 8 a.m. No, 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific. Cool. Can't wait to hear it. Yes. Lawrence, and, please send me one. I'd like to check it out. Yes, definitely get on the mailing list. And I will say Lawrence does not spam you with email. Uh, you get one email every couple of weeks, and it is generally for limited run pedals or uh, flash sales. Win-win. Jasco said he bought two more guitars this week, and somebody needs to stop him. Don't stop, man. And he's already get? got one of these embers as well. 
See, that's the thing. I think these are going to sell out in about a half an hour because Lawrence has been trickling these out, and I can, I think there's at least five of them out in the wild right now. What would you buy, Jasco? Tell us about your new guitars. What kind of overdrives are on your board right now, Ben? Uh, well, uh, this has been on my board. Uh, I run the LPD Dutch, which is uh, his take on the Timmy, which I mm -hmm. love boosting with. And then I have the LPD 87 Deluxe, which mm -hmm. is, think of it as a two-channel Marshall. Uh, the green channel is a JCM 800. I have that set up to a mild breakup, very ACDC tone. And then the red channel is a Jose modded Marshall. So that, oh, dude, that's my 80s big saturated tone awesomeness. And that thing goes So, Ben, wrong. I, I can't yeah. believe I've never asked you this question before, but are you primarily a pedal platform guy? 100%. 100%. Okay. Yeah, because I can't afford a really nice head like a JJ Jr. to play around with. So I find I can buy a hell of a lot of pedals for the price of a head. That's a really nice head. And, you know, last few years I've been playing cover tunes, so I really want mm -hmm. that variety of tones. So I'll have up to mm -hmm. a half dozen overdrives on my board just set up to various things. Fruit hey, Tony. Tony in the house. Hey, buddy. Hey, Christopher. What's up, Tony? Hey, Christopher. Yeah, hey, Christopher. So you, what, you're what, so what, what, what are your overdrives right now, Dave, on your board? Uh, I have the Nobles Mini, uh -huh. the OCD GE, which is the uh, Germanium, uh -huh. uh, the Ethos, which is just a ridiculous train wreck style. Uh, I have the Duelist, the King of Tone, and the uh, Ultraphonics. Oh, yeah. I forgot you had a King of Tone. Talk about yeah. a puddle, man, that's really mm -hmm. you know that's uh that's really about supply demand and accessibility right i mean if you want one now you can wait three years but if you want one well, now it's gonna cost i know you. that i know that uh tessie switch probably has a couple of them that he's selling he gets them all the time and he sells out very yep. fast so tessie um, uh, tessie let us know how many uh king of tones you have right now I see also Jasco mentioned he got a Nags Ebony Limited to 11 and a Novo Cirrus. Oh, I'm so jealous. I love Novo. Wait a second. He got the. Did you get the Eric Steckel Ebony? He got the Eric Steckel Ebony? Oh, my God. Dude, you live very close to me. You better bring that guitar down to my house. Dang, I want to. I'd like to meet Guitar Man 45's wife because she's cool. She bought him a JJ Jr. for his birthday last year. Very cool. Jasco, when you have a free moment, come on down to, to Long Island. Please bring that guitar. I'd and love to see it. Tessie currently has 10 King of Tones in stock. There you go. Hey, Rob, I'm going to contact you about one of those. Yeah. Uh, Jay cool. Steen says, I think about buying the LPD Embers. I'm sure it's great, but I just love the Tumnus Deluxe so much. I get it. Uh, Quentin James bought a new wallet, but it didn't come with a chain. Just saying. He says, uh, and Tessie says, maybe nine. I recently sold one. Well, maybe eight because you recently sold another one. Yeah, I won't. I, I, d d yeah. Um, Hey, Dwight Bailey, good to see you, man. I loved your yeah. new video that I saw this morning. Yeah. Jasco, can I show the picture of the guitar you just uh, you just sent me? Please. Yeah, so there you go, uh, Ty. Uh, Tess says if Thank you don't you. have a cell number, you can get it from Dave or yep. you can get it from me. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it to you in a minute. I just want to see. Uh, I, want, I want to talk about that pedal for just a minute, too. All right, before we do that, here is... Ebony that Jasco yep. Plumbing just bought. Holy smoke. What's that in the back? A runt? It looks like a runt to me. I'm not sure. It could be a JJ Jr. No, I don't know. I can't tell. Hey, Charlie. Like yeah. a runt. See Charlie yes in here. Bozix uh, says hey, he's Charlie. Going, if he's buying an LPD pedal next, he's going to get an 87. I can't recommend it enough. We sold one during my live stream. Sunday night, uh, Simon Hosford out of Australia. Simon, if you're watching, cheers, mate. He bought an 87 on our recommendation. He says, I want to buy my first LPD pedal. What should I get? I'm like, D87. 
dude, 87. It's the best Marshall in a box out there, in my opinion. And I thought that before I ever met Lawrence. I'll tell you another overdrive pedal that I absolutely love. It's called an overrated special. Ooh. Mm -hmm. It's made by George Trips. Mm -hmm. um, pretty phenomenal pedal. Who's it distributed by? Dave? MXR? MXR? Okay. Yep, MXR. Yeah, Trips is involved. Great, with great pedal. Great overdrive pedal. I think that's a Bonamassa pedal. It right? is. It is. Uh, he's using the double, the double overrated. I think it's called the the dual over, overrated special or double overrated special now. I just called uh, it really and overrated. It has an EQ. It's got an EQ on it as well, I believe. Uh huh. Nice. Do you but, run yeah. EQ pedals on your board, Dave? No, uh, but I do want to get a, a Boss GE7. Yeah, because that's what I run. That is the best. Uh, it really is the best uh, boost. I mean, I, honestly, it's it's, it's awesome. the best overdrive boost. If you've got, if you have a little hair on your amp already and you want to boost it just a tiny bit, boost the mids on the GE7. You're right there. That's exactly what I do, Dave. I have found the magic of that pedal when I use it, and I'm using it in front of a Friedman. I find the magic it, it is in really really small movements around the middle frequencies. It, it, you know, for me, and I'm using a humbucker guitar in front of a Friedman, and uh, I, that's how I use that pedal as a boost. It's, it sounds great. Yeah, that's all, that's that's really amazing. Do you, do you use one, Ben? No, I never have. I actually, I briefly used an old Ibanez 11 band EQ, like old school, where it had its own AC plug coming right out of it. Uh, I ran that a bit in the 90s, but uh, I do have over here a Joyo six band, which I think is their imitation of the MXR EQ. And okay. I, I keep meaning to throw it on the board just to play around with it because people say, you know, ghosting certain frequencies will get kind of cool tones. And so I haven't. Yeah, I, I find it. I find it works best for me whenever I just move it just a little bit. I mean, nothing extreme. Mm hmm. And like Dave said, it's always around the the, the mid range for me. Yeah, Jay Steen, Steen says, uh, if anyone needs a Marshall in a box, LPD pedals is one of the best. Lots of great Marshall pedals out there, but LPD sounds great. I I I don't I haven't heard them yet. I need to get some of his pedals, but I will tell you that my Duelist pedal has a. Tube Screamer side and a Marshall blues, uh, blues Breaker side. And that Marshall Blues Breaker is the best Marshall Blues Breaker I have ever heard in my life. Really? Oh, my God. It sounds – it is so convincing that I would put that pedal against a real Blues Breaker. Hey, Janice, just stopping by. Hey, Janice. Hi, Janice. Well, I'll – remind me off air, Dave, we'll talk as far as uh, – me putting you in touch with Lawrence on some stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'd love I to talk, talk to him more. about it, but I forgot to relay. I just figured it. since since you're the guy in Canada, maybe he needs a guy in in the United States if he doesn't have anyone already. I, you know, maybe me and Ty can sit, he can send, and me and Ty can ship them to each other and send them back to him. I'm not asking for anything for free, sure. but we, maybe we we can do some videos with them and uh, send them back to them. Yeah, cause I'm thinking right now his main demo guys is RJ and me, <laughs> I think. Sean Tubbs has done some stuff too, come to think of it. Talk about a player. Sean oh. Tubbs is one of the best. He's and a best super nice guy. So nice. Yeah, the Duelist um... – those are fun. I like I like those vertex pedals a lot. You know, we were talking about boost pedals earlier. Um, you know, they've got a they've got a boost pedal in their arsenal as well. It's really good. And then they've got you know they've got the dumble kind of thing going. Right. <clears throat> and yes, Bozik, uh, Phil McKnight has done some LPD uh, demos, but he also uses them in a lot of his other videos. When he does guitar demos, for instance, he'll use the LPD eighty seven a lot for his dirty tone. And yeah, yeah, definitely bring that embers over for Dave to check out, Jasko. Yeah, uh, we'll talk, uh, Matthew. Uh, we'll 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 talk. I'll give you a call if, tomorrow, maybe if if you're around. Uh, I get out of. In fact, I can call you during 
uh, dialysis because I've got nothing better to do. So if you're around and can accept a phone call, I'll give you a call tomorrow. Yeah, I'd love to see Tessie Switch's next comparison video. He's got a vision mm -hmm. for it where he wants to do a comparison between King of Tune, the 68 uh, pedal clone, and then the, the Helix model. That would be cool. I like I that, adding in the Helix model too, right? Because I'd love to why see not? Because a lot of people are going virtual, even virtual pedal boards. So Well, a lot of people are going virtual pedal boards, Ben. And then a lot. I've noticed a lot of guys that I'm bumping into are using... Uh, some sort of multi effects unit at the end of their board as well. Like yeah. they'll have, you know, they'll have their, their, their more traditional style pedal board with maybe a small multi effects an unit. An M9. An M9. I've seen a bunch of M, uh, M5s, M9s. I've seen um, the Helix uh, HX effects uh, mm -hmm. on the back end, the TC Plethora. Um, I've seen that type of thing. So you're starting to see guys with this blended thing. I noticed that Bukovac's uh, board that he used with Ann Wilson had an M9 on it. Yeah, that's the board that he that he, that's uh, uh, in his uh, rig rundown. That's the board. He has like seven or eight boards, but that's the board from his rig rundown. So uh, anyone want to see that board, look at Tom Bukovac rig rundown mm -hmm. from Premier Guitar. And it's, yeah, that's cool. it's really good. Really hey, good Chad, time. man. Good to see you, Chad. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, hey, Chad. I, I would like to squeeze out a little more versa, right. versatility out of my everyday board. You know, I've, got, I've got a couple of boards, too. And, and you know, they're, they're for very specific certain sure. gigs, right? Oh, BB Ninja, man. Good BB to see here. you. Baby. Hey, man. Salut, mon ami. Ça va? I always speak French with BV. That's the extent of it. Uh, Bozy, I've like heard the reviews on the LPD 68 too, and I'm usually not a JTM 45 fan. Well, actually, the 68 is based on a Plexi, not a JTM 45. That's right. It's uh, it's. Uh, and the nice thing about the LPD 68, Dave, it's actually hard to dial in compared to, say, a Dirty Little Secret, which I like because. Plexis aren't that easy to just initially dial in for your no, tone. And, and you know what? If you have a plexi head, unless you've got great uh, uh, contact between your fingers and your strings on your guitar, you're not going to sound good on a plexi amp. You're just not going to. It doesn't give you anything unless you have something in your fingers to get it. Uh, there are guys that make plexis sound like the second coming of God. And then you put it in someone else's hands, and the amp sounds broken. So you just if you know, I could just if I may just be a wise guy for a minute, please do. That's do one not. reason. That's one reason to get a Friedman small box with the Plexi and Channel One, because they everyone can sound amazing through that yeah. channel. I've played through a small box, and it's it, for me to say that it's my favorite head. I've never owned. I really wish I owned it because it is absolutely the best, probably in my opinion, the best guitar head on the planet. Boy, that yeah. channel one too, that Plexi channel, really channel awesome. one. Woo. So, so good. Just, uh, George's operated uh, overrated special is is way huge. Yeah. My friend Jesse of King Tone has just oh. released the heavy hand pedal. Uh, it's the blues side of the Duelist. So if you go. From a GE7, get the mod. Cool. Very cool. Thank you for the uh, thank you for the clarification on the way huge piece, BB. I couldn't remember. With, uh, way huge, I believe, is manufactured by. It's a division of MXR or manufactured. Yes, uh, by Dunlop. MXR. Dunlop MXR. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for Bozik, there's an LPD 68 drive. Yeah, that's that's just cool the last one. one I think Lawrence ever made with his old logo and style. Because he had leftover parts when he built mine. Um, and yes, the Chad says, excuse my ignorance, but what's what's a clone, he said, basically, I think. Did I just paraphrase for him? I know I'm in a, the minority. What the hell is a clone? Yep. All right, Chad. <laughs> here's what I want you to do. Go sell go sell your $30,000 uh, EVH Frankenstein and buy that pedal. Because that's pretty much what you have to pay for it. 
Seems or not, hard. or don't, or don't do that. <laughs> ah, see, he says, it's a pedal that's worth 5K. No, it's a pedal that sells for 5K. We're not saying it's worth it, but that's what they're getting for it. So, uh, and more. They, yeah, yeah, so I guess it's worth it. There's you know? one on uh, there's one on reverb for ten thousand dollars. Yeah, which Amanda said they actually lowered the price because it was eleven. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. So it's it's practically giving it away at this point. So you could save ten percent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, Chad doesn't have the Frankie anymore. No, I, I knew that. I knew he didn't have it, but I just you know I wanted to make a comparison. Yeah, so and he it's can. Not, so, it's not for you. It, that pedal's not for you. It's not high gain. Hey, House of Twang. I'll tell you what overdrive pedal I love to put in front of my Friedman. I love the Yellow Boss Overdrive OD1. I love that in front of that amp. It, mm -hmm. Those two things are just a match made in heaven. SD1. SD1. Uh, right? Yeah, SD1. Sorry. I love the. Um, the uh, the the Friedman Boost in front the the Buxom Boost in front of that amp pretty amazing I love the Nobles uh, these these are all very you know inexpensive as as uh, pedals go and you can accessible overdrives and you can get them anywhere and they're durable they last forever they never break and yeah. um, I love sound, my Nobles my Nobles they pedal. sound great in the nineties when they first came out they were in this packaging and I. They were selling for like thirty dollars. Yeah, these Nobles pedals because no one knew what they were. Sure. Turns out it's 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 the pedal of Nashville. It is the boost pedal of Nashville. Everyone who is anyone uses the Nobles ODR one, and usually has the vintage one, which mm -hmm. was thirty dollars, and now they're eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. Or for ninety bucks, you can get one of the new the ones, and it, it's stinking awesome. The new, the new mini. I have a mini on here. You can run it at nine volt or eighteen volt. If you run it at eighteen volts, it is godly sounding. It is amazing. Nine volts, it sounds damn good too, but eighteen volts gives you a little bit more girth. Uh, it's just so good. It's a low to mid gain boost. Uh, it is so smooth. Uh, I believe it's a, it's a, uh, what is that? The, uh, that's, that's the, the yeah, yeah, Jasco, the, the, I think you're right. There's so much that happens inside of this pedal. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing. I love it in front of a clean, I, I love to use it with a, you know, with clean channel or with a clean amplifier. Go, I, I go inside and I turn the trim pot down is the way I like to use it. But uh, what a great sounding pedal. Okay, so since we're looking at these pedals, I'm going to go grab a pedal and show you and, and bring it to you and show it to you. This is one of my favorite to put in front of a clean. If I had to have one uh, overdrive pedal and I wasn't allowed any others, this is what I would put in front. Give me uh, one like, back. Yeah, Tessie's got the... Uh, the pedal power three plus in stock and he's willing to make deals yeah that's cool <laughs> nice 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 guitar and, 45's and, got the deluxe version and i'm not going to single anybody out but i see it you know we're getting a few comments you know like who would pay you know this much for claw on you know like five grand ty am i correct in saying a decent 59 les paul is a minimum a quarter million dollars at this point i would think so yeah so that's what you know, or a dumb. I don't even know what a dumble costs. Like six figures. I, yeah, I I remember I saw one at Carter's when I was in there. It was a a modded Fender Twin, and I went ooh ooh. I'd like to play to that, but how much is a dumble, Dave? I'm sorry. How much would a dumble uh a dumble amp? Spring? Yeah, how much would that run? 90,000 to 150,000. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, six figures. Yeah. Bozik, you're right, man. I love the Dirty Shirley pedal too. I think it's amazing and Dave yeah. Freeman does know his tone. There is a there is a there is a pedal um called a Tone Freak that sounds good in front of overdriven amps and I, my understanding is that um 
Dave Friedman had something to do with that pedal. Uh, my buddy Jay reminded me of that pedal the other day when we were talking. Um, I think it's I think it's called a naked pedal. I think it's called a Tone Freak Naked. So, yeah. if I if I had to only use one overdrive pedal, hey B BB, what's the name of the uh, company that he started? That's good information. Mm -hmm. Original designer of the Nobles has started his own pedal company and is now selling some updated, amazing versions of the Nobles. Nice. I think it's called Nordland, isn't it? Possibly. Anyway, this is the pedal right here. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. It's like a modified Angry Charlie. Josh knows this, this stuff. This pedal is so good. It sounds great at, at low gain, mid gain, and high gain. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, buzz soy. It's smooth, but it's, you know, it's crunchy, but it's smooth. It's this pedal is I can't couldn't ask for a better high gain pedal that you can use for any any type of game. This pedal's great. Well, uh, you know, uh, I've never owned one of those, and um, always been really interested in that. I mean, if Andy Timmons is behind that, then mm -hmm. you know it's going to be Definitely great. And I, yeah, and I used the BB. I used the BB for a long time because of the Andy Timmons demos. The funny thing is, you know, Andy uses his BB. He still uses it for the cruisers, his cruisers, the neck pickup and the middle pickup. And then he uses the J, the the uh, AT for the uh, bridge pickup and solos. Poner jams in like a champ. He says, when are we going to have a shred menage, boys? What's going on, everyone? Hope everyone is safe and has a great weekend. You too, my friend, Boner Jams, the sexiest metalhead this side of Hanoi, and his hair is always on point, I must say. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you for the super one. chat. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. Awesome. It's always good to see you every week. So it is Nordland Electronics. I saw Jay and BV both mention that. Yes, it's uh, it's the uh, Dennis. My buddy Dennis has Nordland, and he's brought it over recently. Not only does it sound good, but it's built like a brick shit house. It is really a great pedal. Nice, as they should oh, be. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I, I was going to say when you show that JHS pedal that. JHS, that's one company I've never owned any of their pedals, but I definitely loitered in their NAM booth. And I'm using um, I'm using one of their uh, compressors right now. Oh, which one? Uh, the Tidy Whitey, I think, is what it's oh, called. Great little compressor. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Great right. little compressor. Yeah, I have uh, I have a couple of his pedals on my board right now. I have the Unicorn, which is the uh, mm -hmm. the vibe, the, uh, the vibe. And yeah. I've got the uh, the um, Lucky Cat, which is uh, the the uh, it's a digital delay. It's it's mm -hmm. it's not stereo. It's it's mono, but I have it for just uh, triplet echo. Sure. Like a like a um, a cathedral type vibe. I was always a fan of his uh, Moonshine pedal. Actually, the Moonshine uh, two point because it's kind of his sparkle drive. And by that I mean it's got the dual, dirty and clean, which is nice. I love that. That's the one for you guitar players in the crowd. You know, when you're playing, he's like, he's clean, but he isn't. How is he doing that? I only see one amp. I love. Well, those. I think part of that is using the volume knob on the guitar. Yeah. Well, but yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, like with the sparkle drive doing that parallel signal within a mono signal, and it's just like. I remember the first time I hit a sparkle drive, I was like, what is that? How? Chicanery. And I've had one of them, one of those style pedals on and off of boards for years as a result, because playing country stuff, I want just a little grit underneath, but mainly a clean signal. Mm, so full sounding. Mm -hmm. It's funny that most of the rock guys in the chat are like, what the hell did Nesdal say? 
volume knob? What's that? Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's that thing you keep pulling on throughout the set to make sure she's wide open, right? <laughs> yeah. I'll wear that thing out, man. You have to. You have to. There there is a plethora of sounds in a volume knob and a tone knob. Mm -hmm. You almost don't need pedals. Almost. No, we need pedals. I need pedals. Well, yeah, who am I kidding? I, I, need <laughs> I started to say, look at your pedal board. Hey, if you don't need those pedals, I'll give you my address. <laughs> yeah, there'll be a shipping container coming. <laughs> Can we shift gears for just a minute and talk about the awesomeness that is the King of Ten? Sure. Sure. I mean, that, that pedal is pretty fantastic. It really is. Um, the one that I have on my board is the, the high gain one. And it's when I say high gain, it's really not high gain. It's their it's high version. gain on one side of the pedal, right? Yes, it's only on okay. one side. Uh, um, there's, a, uh, there's a dip switch in the, on the inside of the pedal that, that does different clipping. But in my opinion... The clipping, you know, the higher the gain, the worse the pedal sounds. I think it sounds the best open, you know, when it's fully open. It's still higher gain, but it's not really high gain. It's high gain for that pedal, but it's not uh, what most rock guys would think high gain is. Uh, that being said, when your amp is loud, that pedal sings. It makes your amp sing really nice. Nice. Uh, and, and, and the low the low gain side is incredible, incredible. Uh, yeah, BB it, mentioned it, a great really Jimmy special. Univibe out of Pedal Pond out of the UK, along with a Fuzz and SRV Overdrive. Very cool, perfect. Love that. I love Univibes. Dave and I were talking about Univibes a couple of months ago when yep. I was out looking for one. Mm -hmm. Yep, I My wanted something. One. Really, I wanted something really cool, um, but sounded that, but that wasn't that wasn't crazy. You know, I, I didn't want one, I didn't want a crazy one. My favorite one is the Sweet Sound Ultra Vibe. Now they have what's called a Mojo Vibe, which is their small, and that's okay. The Ultra Vibe is a bigger; it's a big box. Uh, you can get it in purple. Or you can get it multicolored, like Steve Vai's guitar, but they have different colors. Uh, it's about five hundred dollars, maybe a little bit less, but it is the if you don't have an original Univibe from the '60s, that pedal I believe is the closest to that original Univibe you can get. It's got a uh, um, it's a hardwire uh, AC power. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the that's part of what makes it sound so good that it's hardwired. Uh, it's it's not grainy at all. It is so smooth. It sounds fantastic. But the downside is it's big. It's mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you don't have a lot of real estate, you know, size is um, size is important. You know, BB says that you can spec that King of Tone any way you really want to do it. Mm hmm yeah that's cool a lot of options and we got unbelievable in the house uh who's hey, a fellow, unbelievable fellow owner of one of these embers as an early recipient so we know just based on myself and two people in the chat three of them were sold tone bender uh jay stink see I would, jay's got cool stuff man um tone bend i love the tone bender ben if i were sitting with that telly you got right there with that uh, what is that a blues junior blues deluxe blues deluxe with a tone bender come on i can't use tone benders myself they're a little too crazy for me i love them but then again you know you say you you can work that volume control i just wide open that's the that's why i can't bond with any kind of a fuzz type circuit for the most part there's a few out there i enjoy but what's your favorite fuzz pedal ben uh, it's made by Haunted Labs uh, near your neck of the woods out of North Carolina. Chris Cozart at Haunted Labs. Uh, uh -huh. He does the Carolina Reaper, which is uh, a two-in-one. Uh, one side is uh, John Kuzak Overdrive, and then he does the Reaper Fuzz Pedal on the other side. 
And the two of them together is just glorious. Oh, so nice. Yeah. How about the how about the Caesar Diaz Texas Ranger? Mm-hmm. Great. I love it. And it looks cool. I <laughs> Look, we gotta get we gotta get some of these pedal cool looking. I mean, and it looks cool. Uh, Unbelievable says the embers is amazing. Put it in front of the eighty seven total sonic destruction. So that's that that's basically a clawing into a marshal there, Ty. Just saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not the only yeah. wing nut. There you go. I, hey, look, man. If that's now, I should mention your... unbelievable. I'm pretty sure drinks heavily, um, and uh, he's not <laughs> mentally stable. So, and we gotta call him unbleep believable. You listen. You, know, you don't have to apologize for liking to use the to because you like to use the pedal a certain way. I mean, that's. I uh, it's, I w- I have to say, uh, unbelievable sent me some pedals, and I'm demoing them, and I want to thank them. So I c- had uh, strategically placed coughs throughout the video. So it was like I'd like to once again thank un- <coughs> unbelievable, and uh, yeah, he's just guilty as charged. Yeah, see, he and I we're we're tone brothers. I have not tried that jo- the big Joe Stomp box. I've not mm-hmm. tried that, but if it's a Johnny Winter pedal, I'm immediately interested. Charlie S says the Honey Bee Honey Drive pedal. I just like the sound of that. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a, a good sounding pedal. Man, what happened? We talked about pedal wise. Holy crap! Oh, tons of things that we haven't. Cool. So we were talking about fuzzes a minute ago because we're all over the place. Sure. But, um, what's your like favorite that. fuzz, Dave? Uh, well, I have. And don't yell at me. No, it's okay. I have a uh, a full tone '70s pedal that I really love. V uh, one or V two? V two, small. Uh-huh. Love. Well, it. I got the big V one. I also have the uh, I have the Muffaletta, which I love. Caroline Guitar Company makes a pedal called the Olympia, which okay. will blow your mind. I Actually, really, the really good fuzz. A big, the Muffaletta is a big muff. It's not really a fuzz. Oh, uh, this would be my Jess? favorite fuzz I own, Ty. This is made by TL Pedals called the Stinger uh-huh. Fuzz, which is more or less a big muff with an added mid control. Because you know which what? I gotta ver- add controls. Which version of the big muff? Um, <laughs> Ram's head. Ram's head, okay. Yep. Do you like the green Russian? <laughs> I did right that, man. I did that. I did that. My biggest problem with the Big Muff circuit, I really want to bond with it, but it needs a mid control. I don't like the way the mids are, or how are they? Non-existent, essentially, in a Big Muff. So I like to goose it. I would probably run like a Tube Screamer or a Clawn into a Big Muff to get some mids out of it. Wow. Did you read BV's comment? We don't have the ability to put it up there. Uh, Oh, let's see. All right. That's, he says that's he'll do pretty. it in a minute. So I'm just going to see. Uh, Jay Steen says, I see Philip McKnight poured beer and drive over a Big Joe pedal in one of his videos years ago, too. LOL. It still worked great. Yeah. Well, if you play out and you play in bars, that's going to happen. So good to know that it can withstand the elements. All um, LPD pedals are beer proof, Ty. That's one of his well, advertising things. He says they're beer proof. I have to tell my friend Jay about that. He drinks a lot of beer. So um, I. And I, I generally wear part of it by the third set. <laughs> BV, I can't wait to go onto your Facebook page and look at those pics. We're going to talk about that as soon as Dave gets yes. back. We'll put that comment on. Okay. Well, you know, BV is a legend. I'm just saying. BV's a legend. I know he doesn't like to mention it, but when that pedal show, Dan and Mick uh, mentioned he was the legend, and he got nicknamed the legend right then and there. That's right. I love that show, by the way. Is this oh. the one that is this the one that uh, you want? Yep. Up? Yeah, that's amazing right there. A Shinai vibe too. A mm. purple one. How cool. That's you know, right. uh, any pedal painted purple improves tone by 1.3 percent, Ty. You're yeah, right. I used to have a Keeley two knob painted purple. It was amazing. Perfect. Yeah. Probably sounded that much better because it's purple. So, well, I, like, right, so- I like to think so. The elephant in the room. Come on, Dave. You're looking great. Don't say that. Uh-huh. Ah, that is the holy grail, Dave. Oh, sign yep. one. Sign one. 
Yeah, very cool. And who is that sign? I can't make out that signature. I'm going to be honest. I can't either. <laughs> very cool. Uh, I mean, uh, I did Jessica, Jessica no. asked about wah pedals, and um, many of you know that I have a wah pedal weakness. Yep. Um, and believe in trying to have all of them. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, you're not collecting was Ty. You're hoarding them at this. Point. I I really am at this point. Is well, is silly. I get asked all the time though, like what's my favorite, and it's impossible to answer, because you know if I'm playing a strat, you know through a vox, there's one wah that I like, or if I'm playing sure. a a strat through say uh, books and Betty, there's a different wah that I really really like, and then. Yeah, you know, what do I play with the most? And you know, on the tribute gig, there's one wah that I use that's very specific. And people ask me all the time, they're like, Hey, I, I go out, I play, I play in a cover band or I play in a top 40 band or variety band or whatever. What's your favorite wah for that? And it's this one right here. And I got a couple of these actually. One for each foot. Uh, <laughs> uh this uh, MXR, I don't even know the number of this thing. I, I should at this point, but, um, but it's the CAE MXR wah. Um, it's got two inductors here. It's got a gain boost on it. This thing is, this thing is right. pretty sick, man. That's awesome. So this is signed by Jeffrey Tease, by the way. Ah, okay. Mark FX called it. Nice. Those are great. This is uh this is a, a a a real McCoy custom. This was this is, I believe this is a five, a, uh real McCoy. I'm not sure, but I think it's a five. It might be a ten. You know what? It might be just a red ten. Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, this this particular one sounds amazing with humbuckers and single coils mm -hmm. and it's that's so important hard. to me it's yeah. so hard to get a wah pedal to sound great with both humbuckers and single coils. So uh, uh, that's important to me like the sweep on um like the humbucker that mxr sounds great i think both ways and i think the sweep that's on the i think the sweep that's on the jerry cantrell wah uh is great with humbuckers i think the slash um, the the second version of the pedal is my favorite of the two. I think that sounds pretty fantastic. Um, I was telling Dave that pound for pound, one of my all-time favorite was are the old lavender Buddha was. Oh yeah. Um, uh -huh. I I have one. I have one here. I should walk in. It's a couple rooms away. I should go get it. But it, here's the problem with that why is um for me is there's no led indicator um to show when it's on so in a live context you step on that thing and and you're going at it right and you think yeah. you're disengaging that pedal and if you miss you know it, it could take you a minute to figure it out and you don't want to figure it out when you come out of that solo break into a quiet section yeah. <laughs> is where you figure out that your wah is still on you know so the the I'm other cool mentions the Ibanez Weeping Demon Wah. I, I love that Wah pedal. I have I have that Wah. I'll tell you another Wah that I really dig is the um, the Mark Tremonti Morley Wah, which has an automatic. So mm -hmm. you you put your foot on the platform and it it engages. You take your foot off and it's out. The same thing with the Biwa, the the Morley yeah. Biwa. Yeah, same thing with the Biwa. You don't have to click. I like I like that Tremonti Wa because of it, it's a, it's to my ear it's more aggressive than the Biwa is, even though they're made by the same company, obviously. But um, uh, I really I really dig that Wa pedal, and it's a very accessible pedal. You know, it's it's out of uh, the Morley Wa's the DJ affordable. Ashba Wa has a really nice sweep in tone. <laughs> uh, you should definitely check that one out, Ty. And I believe it's Tiger Striped. I don't have that. I don't yeah. have that wah pedal. I think they, it came out the same time. I think they did a George Lynch wah through Morley as well. My buddy Jay bought the new exotic wah, mm -hmm. which is um, a great sound. I don't own that either, but I will soon. That is a very, very good uh, wah pedal. Exotic effects... 
it is a great company. I mean, mm -hmm. all, all of their pedals sound amazing to my ear. All right, Ty, how many Waz do you own? A lot. I don't want to say. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Why? It's embarrassing. Less than 100. How's that? <laughs> Ty owns more wah pedals than I own chorus pedals. I'm he owns more wah pedals than I own guitars. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What you need is, Ty, it's one of those closet organized like women have for shoes. I suppose men too, but you could have you gotta, just pairs of wahs. You got to see Steve Vai's closets in, in, the, in the Harmony Hut all filled with pedals. Everything is neatly. Everything is numbered. It's ridiculous. Nice. It's, it's, uh, yeah. He's got some great closets. I, I you know, I did, um, I did get a wah pedal not too long ago that I really dig looking at. I think, I think a lot of dudes on here might like to see it. Maybe, um, it's not too far away. It, it would, it did take me a minute to dig it out. Well, when we do a wah pedal show, I'll, I'll dig it out. But, okay. um, pretty cool. We'll call it What's the deal with was? You know, I, I love uh, I love wild pedals, and I, I, somebody said a little while ago that they had never really. Oh, Bozik said he had never really dug dug into one before, um, and that's cool too. Uh, but once you do, you know, there's so much. Exp I love. Um, I got tuned in really early in 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 the concept of really listening to horn players as a guitar player, that instead of just like wailing all the time on your guitar, you know, act more like a saxophone player and have to take a breath and become more expressive. Right. So play, 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 take a break, play, 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 take a break, you know, create some spaces. Right. So I had a guitar teacher, a very wise man who, um, who introduced me to this concept and then, um, really challenged me to use a wah pedal to be expressive like a horn player. And so that then began my whole uh, love and affection uh, toward wah pedals. And that's the short story about why I am so ingratiated, you know, to all of this. Yeah. They all sound different. They all sound, they all sound different. Gear Junkie's got a Wallection. I like that. Wallection sits at six at the moment. Uh, Tessie says, I've eliminated the wah and opted for a talk box instead. That's cool. That's talk on my list. Cool. I need a talk box in my life. Well, the, the only problem with the talk box is if you use it wrong, you shake the fillings out of your teeth. Well, there's that. <laughs> See, that's why you got to wait till you're a senior, right? Then you just pop the old dentures out for the solo. Then you don't have to worry about rattling them loose. I'm going to let I'm going to let Dave read Unbelievable's comment. Hang on. This one? Yeah. <laughs> And James needs to hide the way the wah from Kirk. Yes, way ever used on his solos. Have you yeah. tried a Kirk Hammett wah, Ty? Oh, yeah, I I obviously, it's got to be made for humbuckers. I have one. It sounds great. It's made for EMGs, probably. It sounds great. EMGs sound great. <laughs> I know they do. And that battle sounds great. EMGs through a wah sound great. Right. EMGs through anything sound great. <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, y'all can flame all you want. EMGs sound amazing. Hey, I have, dude, my, yeah, my 67 Tele's got EMGs in it. And the majority of my guitars have passive pickups, but EMGs sound incredible. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bozik asks, has anyone heard or tried the new distortion pedal called the Slammerai? The color scheme on it looks really cool. And from the videos, I've seen massive high gain tone. I have not, but now I'm No, intrigued. I haven't either. I like the name, the Slammerai. That is a great name. I am always struck by the creativity of a lot of these pedal makers, both in the design, the way they paint the boxes, um, the names. That's um, half of it. That's, it, it the, that's the fun part, right? Yeah. I mean, if the pedal sounds decent and it looks fantastic, sign me up. When I brought my compressor home for the, 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 the JHS that I'm using right now, um, uh, with the, the is it called a tidy whitey bin? I mean, that's what I call it, but it's a tidy um, whitey. Uh, she's got a my pair, daughter, of, it's got a pair of underpants on it. It's yeah, my daughter is it? My daughter, I have a teenage daughter, and she was like, Is that a pair of underwear? I was like, It yep. is indeed. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, you know, I, I blame certain lifestyle choices. That's how we get these certain paint jobs and names and things like the rainbow machine getting invented. A, a man who is completely sober in life and works nine to five with a suit and tie does not invent the rainbow machine, folks. It's someone in a dirty, wrinkled T-shirt that probably is in dire need of a shave and a haircut and sleeps until 10 at least once a week. Just but you saying. know what inspires I me about that pedal, Ben, that is is the imagery that the imagery that 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 presents itself when you just hear the name and see the box you know you're like man that i i could probably be creative with that you know it's that that is an example of inspiration through branding right so you can almost hear that pedal in the way he painted the box and mm -hmm. created the name you know you can almost hear it I agree. I agree. And uh, I, I do want to mention also, I did get my rainbow machine through Tessie Switch, who's also an Earthquaker distributor. So if you like Earthquaker pedals and don't want to pay full retail, use that coupon code. Nez says, say 15%. I, I, love, I love Earthquaker devices. I think they're super creative. Akron, Ohio. Um, and they sound, they sound amazing. Mm -hmm. And they look amazing. I mean, those mm -hmm. pedals look amazing. Mm -hmm. They do. Maybe. So we didn't talk about the Greer Lightspeed and the South the Sutherland Southland, the right. Southland. Oh my God! A uh, Greer Lightspeed. Oh, do you, the, you, forget about do you have a Lightspeed, Dave? No, I'm I'm in the midst of getting a Lightspeed and a Southland. They're both super different. Uh, the yeah. Lightspeed is more like a Timmy, but not really. Uh huh. It's, it, it's, Timmy's are great. Yeah, Loaded from Dave, dude. Hey Dave, how you doing? Uh, I, yeah, I, it's, uh, the the I've I've heard both, and I love both. I just don't own them. I'm I'm in the midst of, of getting both. Yeah, I've had a light speed. I'm not. I've had a light speed on my board. I'm not using one right now. Do you want to hear my embarrassing Greer story? Mm -hmm. So I was knew I knew the name Greer right, but I was flaking on what Greer amps made. So. I see the Greer booth at NAM, and I walk in, and the owner's right there. And I said, I'm sorry to bother you, but I know your name. Why do I know your name? Like, what, what's your big seller? And he points at the 20-foot banner tie that said, Greer Lightspeed, over 100,000 units sold. That's amazing. <laughs> and I went, eh, yep. And he says, do you want to give it a go? I said, sure do. And I played it, and I went, "Holy crap!" Yeah. I totally understand why you sold a hundred thousand units. Yeah, they're, they're great. They're great pedals. What's up, Mickey Settlemeyer? And they look cool. I hey, mean, Mickey. What, what what color are you gonna get, Dave? Uh, prob. Well, you know what? I don't know. Uh, I, I'd like to get a black one. Uh huh. Because they don't make. I think you got to be very special to get a black one. A buddy of mine, who is really in with them. So if you have a blue one, you're just ordinary. I think the blue one is blue and white are both ordinary. <laughs> so Jay, I'm gonna try to get a black one, but I'll take whichever one. Hey Jay. Hey Jay. Black one. So, would be cool. so I just got a, I just got this. This is the the. Uh, the slammer eye. Yeah, the 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 slammer eye. I just got a picture of the slammer <laughs> eye to show you guys. <coughs> Excuse me. Did Bozik send that to you? Oh, yeah. look at that thing. That just looks cool. It does look cool. Oh, geez. Yeah. Thank, really God cool. that was, thank God that wasn't. Uh, don't swipe left. Don't swipe anywhere. <laughs> That's a cool looking pedal. Very cool looking pedal. He says he might get one just based off the looks. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Try to think of any other overdrive circuits that I really enjoy. Definitely that Timmy circuit. I, I really Timmy, you know what? I, I was never I never warmed up to the Timmy. I just Great uh, pedal. I was always, I've always been intrigued by it. That's my telephone tie. And everyone great, says though. that it's the most amazing thing. And with me personally, when I try it, when I use it, I can't get it to sound good. Jeez, next level BV says Nick 
uh, Greer sent me a wooden one in a tin can case. What? Wow. I want to go hang out at BB's studio. <sighs> Dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, he, he used to send me teaser pics. Friend sent this in. I'm like, what's that? He goes, it'll be out in eight months. Oh, okay. Hey, Vince. Yeah, hey Vince. You, know, I, you know, BV, when it comes to pedals, I think BV is, well, oh my God. I'm not going to say he's lucky. We're going to talk about Sugar Draft. I just think that he's uh, he's he's the shit. He's just a guy. He is. He's got a he's great ear. Guy. Yeah, he's got a great yeah. ear, and he's Very great cool. for feedback on that. And, you know, I'll, I'll say BV uh, made me first aware of uh, Lawrence from LPD Pedals and uh, Zach from Mythos Pedals. Uh, I didn't uh -huh. know about Mythos pedals until uh, BV introduced me to Zach in 2018. And he and I became friends through social media a year before I met him. And it was great. And that was the first thing I said was, um, you know, BV says hi. And he says, so how is the Beave? <laughs> the Beave. So Gino, Gino it brings up the MXR Sugar Drive, which is... An amazing That's a nice overdrive. And I've used that word so many times tonight because pedals today are so good. They are. And so versatile. And I find them easier to dial in today than ever before. Mm -hmm. And um, it is, it's it's rare that, that there are times where I can't get something out of it, right? But I really dug the sugar drive. I loved the color. I loved the size of it. I loved how simple it was. Um, I really <laughs> dug it. I don't own one though. I should. I should own one of those. But he's into that. And and Gina says that that it would that he loves the the Timmy, but his current is the is the sugar. Yeah, that's cool. And I, and I should say I don't use an actual Timmy. I use the LPD Dutch, which is Lawrence's take on the Timmy. So, so I'm. Uh, we'll go back to uh, high gain pedals for just a second. Sure. And yes, I am gonna. I'm gonna be a dick and drop a name. Uh, Johnny Highland sent me um mxr super badass that is amazing sounding those are cool it is amazing and mm -hmm. thank you very much johnny Holland, for that. oh yeah johnny is uh such a uh wonderful individual so generous. Very generous generous so guy. generous super nice guy definitely uh, let's see here uh some get a timmy v3 15th anniversary I, that's what i've got baby oh nice what does that one look like? Um, well, you know well, what? It looks like yeah. I have reverb right here. Let me look. I need to learn OBS and just play my stuff for this awesome guitar. Uh, Mickey says I like mixing the Timmy with my other pedals. Yeah, I, I, I my uh, Dutch is right near the front. Like I actually. Well, I'm going to move it over one because I want to be able to push the Timmy with the embers. So oh, yeah. one into a Timmy. I forgot all about the saturator. Oh, um, that, I, can I give it to you, Ty? Great pedal. I get to say it this time. Great pedal. Really great. You know, um, I always knew, I always kind of in my mind, right, wrong, or indifferent, I always associated him with the, um, with the boss, the orange boss distortion pedal. What was it? A DS called a DS1? DS1. 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 I always associated him with that. And then when he did that pedal with Vox, it sounded, sounded huge. Yeah, that was a great pedal. You see them around from time to time on the secondary market. Yeah, I've never seen one. I've never tried one, but I do love Satch's tone. Right. You know, Bozik said something that I want to I wanna expand on because I think he's absolutely right. He says all the badass distortions from MXR, whether it's the super badass or the 78 or great sounding and won't kill your wallet. I think that's a really important thing that that MXR is is one of those companies that has an awful lot of resources. Right. And from mm -hmm. an out, I have no knowledge of how they run their company, but outsider looking in, it appears that they went out and hired a lot of great design talent and they are creating really, really awesome gear that's very durable, very reliable for the working guy to put on his pedal board and go out and play with, or mm -hmm. for the hobbyist to stay at home and play play with and sound amazing. 
without yeah. without breaking the bank. And I think that that's, um, you know, I, I think that's a great point that Bozik makes. Mm -hmm. Here's well, the thing. I mean, Eddie Van Halen, all of his pedals, all of his his uh, uh, signature pedals, they're all Dunlop MXR. Yep. All of them. All of them. MXR has George trips all over them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, I, and I and great. a lot of other and a lot of other great designers, right? I mean, obviously they've hired some great designers. Yep. Got to say hello to my mom. She says, "Hey, Dave, Ty, and Ben. Hope Hi, you mom. all had a great day sitting back and enjoying the show." Nice, hey, Beverly. And we've got absolute mayhem in the house as well. Mayhem hey, was mayhem. here yesterday evening, which was cool. Let's see. Uh, Tis says when Dunlop bought Way Huge, they kept George Trips on board, and he is also designing MXR pedals. You'll see his initials on some of the circuit boards. Very cool. Very cool. Yep. Yeah, that was the a very smart move. Favorite yeah. favorite Way Huge pedal, Dave. Uh, Ben. Swollen pickles, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Aquapus. What's the what's the 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 Aquapus? I yeah, would say yeah, the, uh, version three, version three Aquapus, version one or version three. I don't Aquapus, like the version great. two. The version pork two loin, is kind of great. Pork loin, pork Amazing. loin, pork loin is great too. Gino says uh, uh, overrated the special. Superpus, superpus is a great pedal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God, so many, so many places to spend your dough. Yeah, wonderful. You know, and they keep saying, you know, everyone keeps saying every year, oh, the guitar is dying. Well, guess what? That's more gear for the rest of us. You know, that, it's interesting, Ben, that you say that because um, I, I think that 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 because you're absolutely right. We hear that, we hear that all the time. Yet. The ancillary products around guitar are soaring, right? I mean, yeah, there's I, this huge pedal market. I think it's it's a shift. You know, guitar came out of the big band in the 40s, and then, you know, in the last couple decades, it's kind of pushed back in as an, assault, an ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, you know, because we know session guys are still busy as hell. Festivals are happening with rock and roll bands. You know, they're still playing out there. Still inspiring people to pick up a guitar for the first time. That's the way I see it. I agree. Uh, fat Looking sandwich. Uh, yeah, a couple of thumbs for fat sandwich. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, BV says, um, Mr. Mustache. Uh, some Dave dude brings up hardwire, which is something that we haven't talked about tonight. They make they make great pedals. I mean, can you say yep. Steve Lucas there? I mean, he's got hardwire all over his pedal mm -hmm. board. Mm-hmm. Absolute Mayhem says he's going to ask me what I think of the Foo Fighters releasing the disco songs. Say what you want, but they sound great. Well, I haven't heard them yet, but I love the Foo Fighters. I mean, I'm, as you all know, I'm a huge Van Halen fan, and uh, Push Come to Shove is a disco song. Mm -hmm. Just got a great guitar solo on it, but it's a disco song. And I'm a kid. I was born in 1970. So disco is good. It's probably the last style of music other than rock and roll that still uses real musicians. Yep. So yeah, no. guitar with wah-wah all over it, real drums, real bass. Most of the best bass players in the world play disco. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that style of music at all. And yeah, I'll say uh, they released a Foo Fighters released a video about a week and a half ago of them covering the Bee Gees. Uh, you should be dancing, and awesome, just awesome. Like, because you got three guitar players, a keyboard player, bass player, drummer, three backup singers as well. You know, and Dave Grohl's there just dancing away, singing in a falsetto, and it's. Well, Pat Smear doesn't appear to be overly impressed playing the disco, but the rest of the band's into it. Yeah, just Pap Smear, I mean, he's he's a punk dude. He's just... Yeah. He's yeah, the you punk tell he's not down with this album. No. If you read the body language in the video. But 
it's great. It's great stuff. I like the new record a lot too. Yeah. I don't want to hear the same record all the time. Yeah. You know, I want I want to hear I want to hear artists that I like. I want to hear them. And to tell you uh, the truth, Dave Grohl, his voice is getting a little tired. He's not not a good screamer anymore. Yeah. And now he's doing falsetto. <laughs> yeah. It's like sure. Yeah, you um, know, it, it does. It, it true, seems that way. Know. You know, D Digitech had such a home run with. Um, we were talking about the Polara earlier, maybe before you got here. Their reverb pedal that is so amazing, and um, and they stopped making it. Yeah, and, and I love the old DoD stuff. Fantastic stuff. Well, yeah, hey man, DoD that that uh, Ingve pedal, right? Wasn't the it the DoD two hundred and fifty or something? Two hundred and fifty. Yeah, the two hundred and fifty. Yeah. The gonculator. What a great ring modulator that is! That thing sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. And listen, how much? How many pedals did young guys go ahead, go out to the music store and grab because they were accessible, they were affordable, and they would get you started on a path, right? I mean, DoD had played an important role in the market. Mm -hmm. And the funny part oh. is the lower end DoD pedals versus the Big Brother Digitech pedals. The DoD stuff's more sought after. That's right. And, you know, let's, let, let's keep in mind that when pedals, not, I'm not going to say when they first came out, but in the 80s and 90s, pedals were inexpensive ways to make your amp do things that it didn't do by itself. Yeah. They weren't terribly expensive. A boss pedal at the mm. most was $79. You know, the, 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 uh, the heavy metal pedal or the uh, the the metal zone, seventy nine dollar pedals. Usually, you can buy it for forty nine dollars. The oh, DS one is still seventy five bucks today. Uh, Dane Electro pedal. How about the old Dane Electro pedals? That sounded incredible. You know, they were funny looking, but they sounded incredible. Mm -hmm. I and had they a. Uh, they were thirty nine dollars, forty forty five dollars. I had a. Um... I had one of those Boss Yellow Super SD ones forever, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I replaced it. I replaced it last year. Um, it was fifty bucks new, yeah. new. Yeah, and yeah. even now, I think they're uh, an SD one. I think they're might they're like ninety, a hundred bucks US new. Even now, you know, an SD one is still on sale for sixty bucks in the US. And I think you in know. some places cheaper than that. And, and the thing, like when I got into playing in the late 80s, you know, all the pros were using this type of gear mm -hmm. and going down to your music store, like say, Dave, and pick up a DOD or a boss pedal. You were trying to, on a small scale, mimic what your heroes were playing with these extravagant rack units. That's right. That's right. Import, that's, an important, that's an important point you made, Ben, because we, we began this conversation talking about clones. And talking, hey, Bent Tom, uh, talking Tom. about clones, Tom. talking about, we, we were just talking about King of Tune. We've done it. We were talking about Timmy's. Um, we're talking about BB's extent, uh, extensive collection of pedals. All of those return us to more vintage tones, right? Mm -hmm. At some point, culturally, as players, I, at some point, we migrated away from all of the processed rack gear and got back to a more organic, um, rootsy kind of tone with, with these pedals, right? And it just exploded and created this whole culture of tone, right? Mm -hmm. But we're finding tone in a, in a very different we in a very different way. We rediscovered analog in many ways because all you know, all of this is all digital or you know, or late, late analog. Um, and also, I think the reason uh, this stuff went the way of the dinosaur too is because each one of these units is now a pedal on your board for one thing, and cartridge. You know, you don't want to be lugging this stuff around. No, you know. and you can't. It's a, it's impossible these days to yeah. to pay the cartridge. Uh, and to how about going overseas if you're if you're a touring musician, how do you pay for how do you pay for you know you don't pay for for uh, flying your gear all over the place. You gotta you gotta either have 
uh, an A rig, B rig, C rig someplace, yeah. or you got to rent stuff when you're wherever you need to go. Yep. But you know, I remember the first time that I, I bought a pedal that I really thought, wow, this is sophisticated stuff. And it was the first time I bought a Line 6 DL4. Sure. And, and I bought it for a live gig. And um, I just remember thinking, oh, my God, nothing will ever be as good as this. Right. And then along came the time factor and then the timeline. And now we get the DD500 and all the and all the similar type mm -hmm. stuff. And now we're kind of going back again, reducing the footprint and getting the DD200. And um, uh, and now you're getting the small Strymon, you know, the Brigadier and the Dig and, and all of that. And. I mean, just look at the um, evolution of, of delay, right? So, yep. I mean, at one time, if we wanted that kind of delay, you know, we had to have a TCG major in a rack and then have a MIDI switch on the ground to control it. Mm -hmm. And then the DL4 came along and kind of started this whole multi-switch, uh, you know, 10 delay engine kind of thing, right? Uh, it's And it happens so fast. Sure. Well, this is the newest craze, I think. The free the tone delay. Oh, that thing's great. This is the new craze. Yeah. It's a smaller footprint. Uh, hey, Timothy, welcome to the is right in front of you. It's very expensive. These things are five and six hundred dollars. But uh, man, is that the that's the new craze these days. Hey, Timothy. Timothy's been rocking line six hey, for Tim. 22 years. That's awesome. So the green, the green line six delay pedal, the DL four. Oh, uh, Tom, you're right, dude. Twenty two ninety. You're right. I yes, the twenty two ninety is it was the best rack unit delay ever. But the green, what 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 I loved about the green DL four was this was the sounds, the delay, all the different types of delay. What I didn't like about this thing was the funny names they had for all the uh, controls. You never could tell what they did because they didn't tell you what they did. They just had funny names for me. You had to figure out what they did. That that bothered me. Yeah, but once you what, – what, for me, I, I will I will admit, too, that um, I'm not a manual guy. Um, I always love it when, like when Pete Thorne does a demo and he goes, and I did this without even reading the manual because that really, <laughs> that speaks to me. Because I want to come home immediately or go to the rehearsal space immediately and plug it up and play it. You know what well, I'm saying? I don't want that's to. The pro that's the problem with us guitar players. We don't know how to read. And I don't care who you are. If you're a guitar player, you're not reading a manual. You just don't. No one, unless you're Larry Mitchell. He's the only but guy. But I, rem I remember the first time I sat down with the DL4 or really kind of bent over, you know, squatted down on one knee. And just started turning knobs until something really, really cool happened. And and I found that pedal, it happened pretty fast. I found it happened pretty fast on my time factor too. You know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big even type guy and I love those pedals. And um, it, it happened for me real, real, real easy there too, because they're, they're big knobs. I mean, it's, it's, it, look, it's idiot proof. I, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, George Tripps designed the green line six delay. According to oh, Jake. look at that. That's cool. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Quite so good. I had, that's something new for me. Yeah. Now, is it true? This is a kind of a question. I, I bet BV will know the answer to this. Is it true that Strymon was born out of line six? That Strymon was called something else for a little while and then it became Strymon? Is that true? I don't know, but you got me. Or is that just a music store my rumor? guy at line six to confirm or deny that? I may have to look into that. Yeah, like it, it wasn't called like I, I can't remember. Like Unbelievable uh, likes his LPD white rabbit delay. That's the same delay that I use. Maybe somebody can Google it. I don't know. Damage that control. Means. That's it, Tom. Yeah, so it was called damage control. And uh, and then became and turned into Strymon. Yeah, and that was born out of line six, right, Tom? Wow, I had no idea. 
How about the even tie H9? It's on a yeah. lot of boards. Must be a probably good pedal. The most, probably the, 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 the uh, most powerful effects unit on the planet right now. It's, and I mean, it's, it's still, I mean, it's been around for a while. And uh, it's it's probably the most powerful effects unit around. I have one, and I've used it pretty extensively in a live setting. Uh, again, I need idiot proof. I I'm not the biggest fan of going into my phone onto an app to kind of have to adjust the pedal quickly. And and I know you can do it on the pedal, but you know it, it, there's there's lots of steps to go through for yeah. a guy like me. I like to have those knobs right in front and do it. That's what intimidates me sometimes about some of these multi. Yeah, you know, some of these more multi, sure, uh, you know, functional type things that I can't get in there and make changes quickly and on the fly. Mm-hmm. So That's what I love about the timeline. I love the timeline. Um, I'm a kind of newbie at it. You know, I just got it recently, maybe six months ago. Uh, and I know they've been out for, what, 10 years now, the timeline? Probably but, longer uh, than that, right? Maybe even longer than that, yeah. I still think that it's... Uh, one of the greatest delay pedals ever, ever made, mm-hmm. ever made. So it looks like Tom says engineers that left line six. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. The H nine, there's been some changes too, in the way you purchase algorithms. You know, I think since April now that you purchase, uh, like there, like whatever you've purchased to date. So say you got like a core unit and you put on, you know, some chorus and some delay and maybe some space. Um, now you you get credit for all those purchases in your registered Eventide account the way I understand it. And then if you want new algorithms, you've got to go ahead and blow, the, blow it out. So, but it gives you credit toward everything you've purchased to date. I think that's the way they're operating the H9 algorithm wow. acquisition now. Don't quote me on that. Please do your own homework. And But I, I, I'm pretty sure that that's... That's how I understand it to be. So Bent Tom says he's got two of them and they're ma- he, they're maxed out and he loves them. The only downside for me about the H9 in a live context is how quickly I can switch through the presets because you, you and I know that there's switchers you can buy that, that take care of this for you, but just with the pedal itself, you know, getting from preset to preset, then you've got to activate the preset, right? So, Again, idiot proof for me is stepping on it and it's engaged, stepping on it again and it's disengaged. Yep. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, BV says, have a free the tone prototype from Yuki here. Now that will be out in some months time. Strive and main designer come from line six. Okay. Tessie saying hi to Dwight Bailey and, uh, so I've seen Bozik's brought this up a couple of times, so we should hit on it. Yes, uh, so announced the Slash Collection from Epiphone, uh, which he's previously had a Slash Collection through Epiphone, along with the Slash Collection through Gibson. And he was mentioning uh, here that, like, uh, standard Epis around the 600 range, the uh, Slash one, new one, came out, the price at 900 without upgraded hardware, without the Slash pickups. Shouldn't it be cheaper? But Tessie said it right there. Slash needs to get paid for each unit sold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the same thing with Bonamassa's guitar, Epiphone guitars. You just know be- that premium more when it's cheaper to begin with. Like if the artist has to get, say, $100 per unit sold, you can bury that $100 into a Gibson a lot easier being seen to an Epiphone, right? You know, like 2400 to 2500 isn't as big a sticker shock as 400 to 500 yeah, BV. I had I do not own any, uh, but everyone that I've played oh. through is extremely impressive. UA stuff is yeah, next level stuff. Extremely impressive. And he and Dave. Speaking of free the tone, BV's got a free the tone prototype um, that'll be coming out in, in the near yeah. months. And he did confirm, like uh, like Tessie did, that uh, Strymon main designer came from Line Six. I thought okay. that I heard I had. That's heard very that. cool. <laughs> Dan says, at this point, has the world had enough Slash guitars? You know what? I think we're at the point where it's, I think Slash is using Gibson as a design house tie. You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, if he comes up with an idea, like all of a sudden, let's say he, Slash decides he wants to come up with a custom blue burst. He's going to go to Gibson. They're going to bring it out as a, you know, a prototype for him. He's going to play it. And then they're going to release a consumer version of it. Right. And, you know, that's why, like, he's had that partnership with Gibson an awful long time. And I think they're at the point where they are not just, here's your one signature model. The whole point is he's bringing out his subline with Ig Gibson in many ways. Well, it's been, it's been standardized, right? And, yeah. um, and I think a lot of y'all know that I own a couple of those guitars and mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the quality behind those guitars. I think they're really, really good Les Pauls. And, and um, I think everything, at least the two that I own, everything on those guitars, it's flawless. Um, they play great. Uh, the weight is fantastic. It's got this customized net carve you know customized net carve um it, it it's a little different uh it feels reminiscent to my hand it feels very reminiscent to dare i say uh r9 but that's what it feels like to me so i'm not gonna i wouldn't yep, doubt it gonna feel, so that's what it feels like to me it's more or less built by the same folks right i'm gonna put something out there and i'm probably gonna get a lot of shit for this here comes three but, thumbs downs Dare I say, is Slash the new Eddie Van Halen? Now that Eddie is not here any any longer, is Slash the guy, the household name, the guy right. that everyone thinks is? I, well, and that that's what I was thinking. You know, with kind of where it is with the Slash collection, it's kind of like how Eddie evolved into EVH eventually. But prior to that, he was having a company build his guitars. Well, Slash, we know he plays Les Pauls ninety nine percent of the time, so. You're not going to come out with your own guitar brand, which is essentially a Les Paul. So why not work hand in hand with the company that already builds the gear you use? And I think that's what it is. It's a partnership the same way Eddie was with Music Man and PV and then Fender. I, you know, having, having a different having, logo. Uh, Dave, I don't, I don't know if I can go. I don't know if I can go quite as far as that. Um, only because of the, uh, I, here's what I believe Slash to be. I believe that he, he is an innovative blues rock player. I believe that, I believe that he has an extremely unique guitar voice, whatever that means to each of us as, as players, you know, whether, whether it's his vibrato, whether it's his use of harmonic minor in the context in which he uses it. Um, the way he phrases things, the way he bends things, the way he pre-bends things. He's got an extremely unique guitar voice. Uh, he's an, he's an incredible guitar player. Uh, he's got an incredible tone. He's a great songwriter. Um, there are a lot of similarities and parallels and he is a very recognizable figure. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's okay, so that my, household name. My my uh, argument here is, other than Van Halen, what single band has the most radio play on any rock station? Yeah, the the Guns only other Led, Led Zeppelin. No, no, it's Guns N' Roses. I'm talking about that are out now. That Van Halen. I'm talking about people that are current. Foo Fighters, that's it. Yeah, but they, uh, okay. Only because they've consistently been bringing I, music. I, I, listen, whole time. I listen to I listen to uh, Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. I listen to Ozzy's Boneyard and Hair Nation, mostly. Right. And Guns N' Roses is probably every fifth song. Oh yeah. I listen to I listen to uh, Q one hundred four three. Mm. Uh, ACDC. In New yeah, York. True, Rob. And DC as well. Guns N' Roses is on all the time. This is a New York uh, sure. station. So in 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 my area, in this neck of the woods, they're the new Van Halen. They really are. I mean, not that they're new, but you hear them as much as – I mean, Van Halen used to play up here every fifth or sixth song. You'd hear a Van Halen song. Listen, I think you – you raise a good discussion point. 
I mean, I see, I, I see a lot of parallels. I mean, the question was, the question that you first posed was, is he the new EVH? Um, I, but I just, not as a player, Ty, as a household name. Well, yeah, I'm not talking about his technical, his technical. I'm not. No, talking I, about I understand. He's I, really not a pioneer like Van Halen yeah, was. I, I understand. But, but I mean, the guy is. You know who Slash is. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. You know who Slash is. You probably going to know he plays a Gibson Les Paul and you know what band he's in. It's just, is he the new Eddie Van Halen? I believe he is in that respect. I, I don't think there is a, other than Pete, you know, other than like, say where we go back another generation, right? Where right. that are still playing like am I gonna be, am, of the world. Am, and Jimmy am, am, am I going to be a jerk and say that Ed is Ed and that no one's ever going to enter that class. Am I well, just going no, to be a you're, complete you're jerk right. to say that? No, you're not being a jerk because you know how much I love that guy. Eddie Van Halen has been my hero since mm -hmm. I knew what Eddie Van Halen was, 80, 1981, for me. And he, there's never going to be anyone that's going to be in the same class as him. I, I, I think you raise a good discussion point. I but do. I'm just saying, listen, I have to be objective. I cannot be subjective. Because I'm always going to be subjective and say no one's going to be better than Eddie Van Halen. No one is ever going to do what Eddie Van Halen did. Yeah. The only person that ever came close and did for his for his generation is Jimi Hendrix. Jimi yeah. Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen are the two top tier guys ever on this planet. And I don't care what anyone says. I would put that argument against anyone. But... I'm saying that as far as household name, as far as you know who Slash is, you know what he plays, you know what band he's in, you probably know what he sounds like when he's playing. Slash is kind of the guy right now. I think if that is the if that's the criteria that we're going to check the boxes on, I think I, I think you make some very compelling points. I you know I'm really tempted. I really want to do that man on the street and just rambly say like just name a guitar player. That's all you say. Name a guitar player. And uh, I think you would get definitely, because there's in age groups, and I'm thinking the only other person, and this would be skewing younger, would be Jack White. And, because, he, God, so you know, and that's popular amongst, again, non-musicians, because Jack White has been out there in the press, you know, as much as Jack White, as much as the White Stripes, as much as the Raconteurs, as much, you know. Um, but Dave, Dave. Where, yeah. where Jack White checks the box, creativity, innovation, Absolutely. originality. Yep. I mean, he checks a lot of boxes. Doesn't do it for me, but you're right. absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, uh, man on the street, you're going to get Eric Clapton. You're going to get Jimmy Page. You're always going to get Jeff Beck. You're going to get Jimi Hendrix. You're going to get Eddie Van Halen, Steve See, Ray Jeff Martin, Beck, Jeff Black. Beck is a guitar player's guitar player. I, th I think I think Beck kind of Beck and Lukather and um, that crowd they 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 belong to us. You, you yeah. know. Um, I agree. I agree. But you're going to get the guys that don't know that can't name a Jeff Beck song are going to just mention Jeff Beck because of the name Jeff Beck. Because when I was younger, maybe, and I, maybe, I didn't maybe. know Jeff Beck. I would say, yeah, Jeff Beck, and I didn't couldn't name a song until mm -hmm. I found out about Jeff Beck. Gino's and, right. There's a lot of people that will say John Mayer. John Mayer, yeah. That's yeah, John, well, John Mayer too now, yes. And let me and tell again, you, I don't, yeah, I don't care what any, I, I don't care what anybody doing. says, he earned it, man. That cat yeah. can play and he can write and he, uh, he's got, he's got, he's got chops and he's got groove and he's got rhythm. He's got, rep he's got, he's got all the tools, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Guitar Man 45 says Tom Petty was just as popular. Uh, yes, but people don't know Tom Petty as a guitar player per se. They know right. him as a songwriter. Right. Hey, BB Rick. So BB is in, uh, BB's across the pond and he makes he, a great point. Him. He says, one thing to remember is that EVH did not cross the ocean to Europe and the UK in the same way. Uh, he did, you know, it, with the same type of popularity that he did in America. That's a good point. Yes, that's absolutely right. 
EVH was not glo- he he wasn't global for a long time. Right. Whereas I would say, getting back to Slash, Slash was pretty global by what the second album. Yeah, I mean, well, the, yeah, the but, appetite kind of took them around the world to at least be known, not necessarily big around the world. But by the time Use Your Illusion tour was wrapped, well, up, they sh- they shot all the Tokyo stuff too yeah. for the big live. Exactly. Live thing in '92, right? Uh, I agree, Gear Junkie. I think Steve Ray Vaughan would approve of John Mayer. Yeah, me too. Steve I Ray love Vaughan. Vaughan. He, he, he loved everybody, man. I mean, he mm-hmm. just he loved players. Stevie Ray would probably be doting over Eric Gales and um, Robert Rudolph and yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, Bonamassa. He would Dole love Bram Hall. Oh I mean, yeah, he on. loved he loved Doyle. Doyle had just sure. come out when Stevie was around. He was young, but it, he, he knew. It was speaking great. of Stevie, great book by Nez says two time alum Andy Alador. Probably it, the best SRV book I've ever read. Let me see if I have that available. Bozik Hendrix would love Mayor too. I agree. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. I don't have it available. I have. What would Hendrix say about Randy Hansen? Uh, I don't know that he'd like him. I think he'd love him. Randy Hansen makes the hair on my arm stand up when he plays. Well, him. I think that if Randy Hansen was doing the, the the Jimi Hendrix vibe, if Jimmy was still alive, Jimmy would not like that. If he was doing the whole get up. If Randy Hansen was just his own look and played like Jimmy, but just did the you know didn't do the Jimi Hendrix vibe thing. I think he would probably respect that more. Boy, Randy Hanson, give, he just gives me chills, man. Mm-hmm. He's a great guitar player. Good, he's an amazing Lord, Jimi Hendrix you. guy, and he's a great guitar player in general. But do I think Jimi Hendrix would like him? Have you seen? Sure. There's a video of Han- Randy Hanson doing uh, "Papa Was a Rolling Stone." Mm-hmm. Like into Foxy Lady, maybe. Oh, yeah, no. I think there's a bunch of songs in there. Like that. The, Holy he <laughs> smoke! The, so you're listening to him do "Papa Was Rolling Stone," and you you can you can honestly imagine Hendrix doing it at that point, and the way in which Randy is controlling the guitar, the wah, and the massive amount of volume that's coming off of that cranked Marshall is just spellbinding man i mean it's everything you wish it's everything i wish my guitar tone could be um but then you wouldn't be working either because that's not what is making money for you it is just so emotional dave that when i listen to guys play like i find i listen i think we talked about this last week or a month ago or whenever I even find some a lot of emotion in Mayer's playing, especially with the trio. Uh, Mark Knopfler uh, is another one. Some Dave dude just mentioned uh, mm-hmm. again. You know, it's uh, there, there's a lot of emotion in that playing, and when you you know kind of taking it back to Slash, that's one thing you inherently take away from his music is all of the fire and emotion that he that exist in those compositions. The chord voicings alone, man, how aggressive mm-hmm. can a chord voicing be? And it's so easy. And then how emotional can a chord voicing be say in, uh, in, um, in, uh, in, in patience, you know, I mean, that's, those are, those are very close arrows mm-hmm. of his, of his playing, right? There's a lot of maturity in that. He was a young man when he recorded that. Well, Zeke asked, what do you think Hendrix would think of EVH? I think he'd love them because they're both innovative. Yeah, because he's a pioneer. Yeah. He did things that no one ever did. Mm-hmm. I think Hendrix would do that. I think yep. he'd want to smoke a joint with him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, this has been a good discussion tonight. A lot of yeah. participation from our friends in the chat, too. 
Yeah, we've yeah. got some new names in the chat, which is always awesome, which we should mention. We're two hours into the show. Please subscribe if you're new and give us a like and make sure that bell is set to ring all so you'll get notified whenever we go live talking yeah. here. Click that bell so you know when we're going to be live. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's set to all. And listen, if any of you dudes in the chat, if any of y'all want to jump in here and, and uh, make an appearance and chat it up with us, Send one of us a message and jump in and, mm -hmm. and talk with us. That'd be cool. I'm looking at Unbelievable since we have pretty much identical pedal boards. <laughs> he's, when he's mentioned, I'm running this into this. I'm like, so am I. Oh, uh, so Charles wants to go ahead and throw out Gilmore and Santana. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. David Gilmore, are you? Is, is there a more emotional rock player than David Gilmore? And talk about tone. Yeah. Right? I, I mean... Live at Pompeii, uh, that the guitar solos at Live at Pompeii uh, uh, just floor you. And then you go listen to the Pulse, and you hear a much more mature player approaching those same pieces of music with the same fire. And come on, everybody wants Santana's neck pickup tone, right? Yes. I mean, everybody wants that. So Mayhem brings up an amazing point. Yeah. Another point okay. about Slash. When GNR split up, people really learned about Slash because he was in so many other bands over the years. To the main draw was Slash was the guitar player. Yep. Yeah. It's true. Is the truth. Hey, yeah. um, some Dave dude, he keeps throwing out some great stuff right here, too. One of my favorites, Gary Moore. Uh, uh, yeah. Gary Moore. Phenom. Uh, Richie Blackmore. John I was listening. To, oh my, uh, don't even. How could you forget about John Sykes? You can't forget about John Sykes. Yeah, Ty. How would you forget about John Sykes? <laughs> hey, John Sykes released another new song about a month ago. Did y'all did y'all listen to that? I, 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 heard, I haven't listened to it, but I heard about it. Oof. Um, He's a scary, scary man. Like Flash's Snake Pit, better than DNR. I yeah. you know, personally, yeah, I, I love Alice Kennedy. Yeah, or Velvet Revolver. Love that band. I do too. Yeah. You know, recently saw them. Uh, I think it was uh, it was on an anniversary of the record, and it was like a crazy anniversary. It's like seventeen years ago, right? That that first contra that that first VR record came out, Contraband. Mm -hmm. Gino Ames, I agree. Sykes is um, pretty special pretty special player and you know you, you think about guitar tone and technique there's so much to unpack in a solo that that we can all learn like we can take the solo for is this love right and begin to unpack that in how he incorporates song melody in that solo but he's still able to squeeze like a minor nine arpeggio out of that solo i mean there's tons of cool guitar show off -y stuff in there but he never, he he never loses the feel of the melody in that, which mm -hmm. you know Sykes is so consistent. Yep. Um, in in doing that. Yeah, I agree with Gear Junkie. Slash and Miles are gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of the best new rock and roll. I mean, he put on a great show. You just got to listen to it. There's and listen from a guitar from a guitar playing standpoint, if you want to sit down with a Slash and Conspirators record to learn guitar parts, don't think that you're sitting down to learn it the same way you would sit down and learn Appetite. The the Slash that recorded Appetite and Slash that does these Conspirator records are very different. Mm -hmm. And um, you're going to put some work in. It's harder work. Yes. The songs you're gonna are more put, intricate. You're uh, gonna put some work in. They all have almost every song has a hook like mm -hmm. you can't believe. But the songs are very intricate guitar wise. Uh, go watch them live on YouTube. There are quite a few full shows on YouTube. Watch them, but watch them after this is over. Yeah. So hey, uh Gino Sykes. Sykes, in my opinion, has the best recorded rock guitar tone in the history of rock guitar music. And I've said that on here many times before. And um, 
with all due respect to my favorite guitar player, John Sykes is, he, he wins for Guitar Town. I mean, he wins. Mm -hmm. Nice. And talk about neck pickup tone. Come on. Sykes. Yeah. Exactly. Jay says, I love shred guitar, but I also love guys like Gilmore who can say so much with so little notes. Exactly. It's we very true. It. Gilmore always does a very, uh, harkening back, a very melodic solo. You know, like you can whistle a David Gilmore solo. All right. So let's talk melodic. Peter Frampton. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. Hey, that yeah, guy, great. that guy can. Neil do, Sean. He does everything without doing the pentatonic, the classic, you know, pentatonic scales. He plays the most melodic, memorable solos in all. I mean, do you feel like we do? Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holy crap. Neil Sean. Uh, Neil Sean, another guy. I don't care for his speed technique, but his melodicism is You can sing his solos. You can sing them. Mm -hmm. And let, you can sing them until the speed stuff comes up. Then it's just jumbled notes. But well, I some, love Neil yeah, Sean. Some songwriting is chromaticism in there. Yeah, Maybe. I agree. Gilmore's tone's glorious. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brian, there's May. a great, Brian, there's a great player. There's a great YouTube channel called I think it's called Gilmoreish, which. Um, the 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 owner of that channel is really a Gilmore connoisseur, and takes an awful lot, uh, pays an awful lot of time and attention to nailing down Gilmore tone. Um, so if you're if you guys are into David Gilmore, you'd probably love that channel if you're not already tuned into it already. Gino says when Sean slows down, he's magnificent, magnificent. What he said, I agree. He's good too. <clears throat> I agree. Gary yeah. Clark Jr., sure. Oh, Gary Clark Jr. Innovation, man. Mm -hmm. And cool and a cool guitar. Uh Guitar Man 45 says Peter Frampton is the reason why I bought my first Gibson Les Paul back in 76. Seen his picture in guitar player and had to get one. I get it. Not alone, I'm sure. Dan Jersey likes Brad Gillis's playing. Hmm. Oh, I'm a big fan of Brad Gillis. Big fan. Yeah, and he's back out playing. Or... We'll, uh, we'll we'll talk more about Brad Gillis in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Friend RJ Ronquillo got to open for Brad Gillis on Friday. So when he's playing with Corey Taylor, and then Corey came out and. Uh, did the encore with Night Ranger and RJ was sitting side stage. Don't don't tell me you love me. That's what they were playing. And RJ was just loving it. Unfortunately, Ty, uh, RJ likes to get his pre-show naps in because he didn't sleep too well. And for the hour or so that he was asleep, Night Ranger came into his dressing room and they were all hanging out. And his buddy Christian sent him a picture of him playing Brad Gillis's Red Strat. RJ just about died. I, I showed you guys this picture. I showed you guys this picture uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is from, I think, the 4th uh -huh. of July. Brad sent me that picture. Great photo. Oh, uh, Why am I not surprised? Our good friend BV Ninja knows the guy that runs the Gilmore-ish site. He's a good friend of his. That's that's amazing. I, I, love, uh, I love his content. BV, I love his content. I think yeah. it's really special. Yeah, I agree, Amanda. Corey did sound awesome with Night Ranger too. I I never really got into Corey Taylor because I'm not into Slipknot, but hearing the non slips on that stuff, I was like, holy crap, this guy can sing. Yeah, like, I, I'm a huge Night Ranger fan. You, if those of you who think Night Ranger are just a radio friendly sister Christian, uh, don't tell me you love me and and rust, can still rock in America. You guys are so wrong. Yeah. Their records are hard, heavy. They are so good. The songs are amazing. Go Sing me away. Sing me away. That's my favorite deep cut from Night Ranger. 
Gino saw Night Ranger uh, open for Sammy Hagar just before the pandemic. Nice. That'd be a good show. But don't tell me you love me. He's got a got two monster guitar solos in it. Of course they do. I mean, so does you can still rock in America. Uh, they they're all even even the radio friendly songs are great. But if you think that they're just sell out radio friendly uh, band, they are so much more than that. They're ridiculous. Mm hmm. I agree. How aren't you building a, a Night Ranger tribute? I am. Uh, I am building a, uh, it's, uh, uh, Brad calls it his Bubba. It's the Jester, the red Jester, uh, uh, 62 Strat that he has, the red one with, yeah. with this Floyd on it. Hang on. Let me show you the Floyd that I, I'm and putting on it. The neck and headstock black. It's this FRT1. This is going on that guitar. Um, I have everything. Well, I'm not going to show you everything, but I have uh, all of these type of Amazon Prime. There's a shitload of these things down here uh, with all the stickers and everything, pick guards and all, everything that I need. Are you carving in a wireless unit into it, Dave? Uh, no, that I'm not going to do. I'm gonna, I don't I'm gonna, blame you. I'm going to make it look like there's a wireless unit in there, but uh, – uh, and I've he got still uses pickups. that wireless unit. How uh, crazy yes, he is does. that? He does. Um, I've got the neck and the body on order. Um, I'm missing just a couple of the uh, of the stickers, and uh, they're so hard to find. And I, when I spoke to Brad last, he was so excited to to wait for it to be built to see. He wanted to see what it looked like after it was built. So nice. we'll see. We'll see. That's all cool. I'm gonna say about Brad these days, but. There'll be more in the future. Mm -hmm. Cool. Near future. Near future. Well, guys, this has been a fun time tonight. It has. It's been a great show. In fact, I think we should probably leave on a high note. Yeah, oh! absolutely. There it is. So are we on Thursday, Ty? You want to do Thursdays yeah. now? Okay, so everyone in the chat, we are no longer doing Wednesdays. We will be doing Thursdays from now on, 8 to 10 p.m. or thereabouts. Uh, and uh, look out, you know, when you click the bell, when you subscribe and click the bell, you'll get all the notifications. You'll, uh, there might be some extra curricular stuff. You never know. Um, just look out for it. And thanks for joining us. It was a great show tonight. Ben, Ty, thank you so much. It was awesome tonight. Awesome. It's always awesome. I always have a great time with you guys. But tonight was really, really a great time. And remember, folks, Ember's demo drops on my channel, 11 a.m. Eastern, tomorrow morning. Ben's channel. Hey, good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging with us. See you someday, dude. Say, See you soon, man. Be good to each other. Happy tone chasing. Don't overpay on used gear. Reverb's your friend. Let's you know the value. And also, don't litter. Don't. And on that note, we'll see you next week.